Inspired by the small family-run bookstore, Cook the Books will reveal the cooks behind the books. Celebrity chefs, rising culinary stars and food writers. They'll tell me about their latest book and what inspires them. And then they'll cook some of their favourite recipes in our Cook the Books kitchen. Where I'll try to discover some of their culinary secrets. And I'll also be out and about visiting some celebrated food writers at their home or restaurant. This week's feature cookbook is Hot Pink Spice Saga by Peter Mathias and Julie Leclerc. They've been friends since the early 90s, but it's the first time they've collaborated on a cookbook. I don't think we even had a fight. No. <laughs> and there's nothing like travelling through India to, you know, make or break a friendship. The book is based on Peter's culinary tours of India. She wrote the story and Julie took all of the photos. I really love taking my own food photos because you can really complete the picture with how I want it to be. One wonderful day we were in a, basically a hut and we were cooking on the floor. And so, you know, I could just be down on the floor getting a really authentic photo Beautiful of shot. what was yeah. going on. <laughs> I remember that shoot, the electricity went off, remember? It, so it was hot. like a tin hut. And so the fan wouldn't go. Julie's upside down on the floor trying to get the photos, pouring the sweat. <laughs> Peter's going to make the first dish from their book, a vindaloo curry using some choice cuts of beef brisket. What do you know about vindaloo? It's a curry and it's from India and it's potentially not so hot. Wow, see most mm -hmm. people think it's really, really hot because the way they make vindaloo outside India is quite different from how it is in India. Right. So they usually make it with pork. Right. Because in Goa they're about 40% Christian so they eat beef and they eat pork, which is unusual for the rest of India. And I particularly like it with beef. Shall I give this to you to do? Oh, yeah. <laughs> the world's lightest mortar and pestle. OK, so we're going to put in cardamom. Mm -hmm. We're going to put in cinnamon. Coriander, fenugreek, turmeric, cumin and peppercorns are also added. The other thing that has to go in is dried chilies. Ah, the mm -hmm. thing with the chilli is, the smaller it is, the hotter it is. Uh -huh. The redder it is, the hotter it is. Right. So this will be hot, yes. but not you're not going to die. Too hot, yeah. Seeds, Good. <laughs> seeds nice. are hotter. It smells beautiful. And it looks beautiful. Also, you've bashed open the cardamom pods. That's the thing that makes you want to die of ecstasy. Yes. That's, <laughs> that's the flavour of cardamom. <laughs> And you never wash the stone, you just oil it and then... <laughs> <laughs> Miss right. Carly, could you yes. please put the vinegars in? Sure. The thing about vindaloo, vin, comes from the word vinegar. Why? Because oh, right. it's taken from a Portuguese recipe. Most recipes in Goa are a Portuguese-Indian fusion. Right. White vinegar and some dark vinegar. Right. Now, nice. the beef, that can all go in. In an ideal world, you would marinate overnight. Overnight, right. I've washed my hands, Carly. Excellent. Thank you. Uh, would you like me to chop an onion while you're doing that? I'd like you to chop an onion. Maybe, Julie, you can um, turn the element on <laughs> and stick some. Get them working. It's I can multitask. If I could get you to chop up some... Ginger. Skin on. Uh, no. Oh, no, the good trick is if you get a teaspoon, if you just run the oh, teaspoon over it, rather than peeling it, it's much easier. Fantastic. Yeah. And you just want slivers, no. do you? Just thin, nice slivers. No, matchsticks. 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 Oh, 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 yeah. <laughs> this is really, truly, deeply what they do. Look at those matchsticks. Ooh, Perfect. Beautiful. Okay, get that going. And now we're going to put the meat in. That's been marinating. Get every little bit in. Yeah. Oh, that smells good. Mix that already. around. Oh, I feel like I'm in India. It's sizzling, <laughs> it's spicy, it's hot. Tomato time. You make a little cross in the top of the tomato. This is called blanching. Mm -hmm. This the, is a really tomato. fast way of getting the skins off tomatoes. Right. Then, I'll give you one and I'll do one. Oh, it's a tomato off. Uh-oh. <laughs> <laughs> wow. 
because you don't want to cook the tomato. Tip. Yeah, you just want to get the skin off it. Now, the true secret uh -oh. is they grate the tomatoes rather than slice them or chop them. And I actually do it straight into the pot, and it's just one less well. thing that you've got to mm. clean. Right, we're going to mix that in. Yes. The tomato. Half a cup of water. Scrape all the good stuff off the bottom. And this is another thing we learnt in India, is that they often use dried chilies and, and fresh, fresh chilies. The flavour of fresh green chilies is quite different from dried chilies. So I'm going to throw in two of those. <laughs> Turn that I'm down. I'm getting worried. Be very worried. <laughs> <laughs> you just want to see me sweat. I do. I can't imagine what it's like cooking something like this in a tin shed with no fan. Oh, on the floor? On the floor. Easy, is it? Piece of cake. <laughs> Piece of cake. Jaggery. Another secret mm. Portuguese what is it? thing. Jaggery is sugar cane. Very intense, very dark. Would you like to taste a bit? Yes. Why is it so hard? Because they oh. reduce it and oh. reduce it and reduce it. And when you see it in the markets, there are big mountains of this. Browns, isn't it it's heavenly? It's like fudge, it's like Russian fudge mm, or something. Mm, mm. I need some. Mm. Uh, <laughs> Sorry, I forgot about you for a second. <laughs> I'm going to have to get some more out of the packet. I'll just get a little bit more because you and June yeah. have eaten it. Mm. So that goes so in. So we put that in. Mm. So now, we give that... Oh, did I put the chilies in? You did. Yes. <laughs> so we've done everything. Definitely we've put some chilies in. <laughs> so we put the lid on. So that just... Does that, its thing. That just simmers gently for about three hours. Right. Go and look at it occasionally. Yeah. Don't complete. Don't go off to the pub. <laughs> what do we do now? Just wait. We just wait. So we're into the garden. Have and we have got a any beer? Cup of tea. <laughs> <laughs> I make a mango lassi. Inspired, Julie. We can sip it while we're waiting. Let's do that. <laughs> Fantastic. We just need to whiz up some mango. Excellent. That was quick and easy, wasn't <laughs> it? It was. Yum, so that's our homemade yoghurt, which is so easy to make. Yeah, we'll go, yeah that's about 50 50, 50 50 for the moment. I quite like to add a tiny bit of rose water. Right. It's really delicious. It looks only yeah, and that just amount. makes it kind of otherworldy. <laughs> okay, I think that's looking good. Mango lassi time. Yeah. Namaste. Namaste. <laughs> Mm. It's good. Hard not to get a mango less mm. moustache. <laughs> the Vindaloo still has a way to go, so it's a perfect excuse for a different kind of drink and more talking about India. Every day is a surprise in India. <laughs> the word that really summed it up for a while there was random. Even in the same hotel... <laughs> Very random. And, ..and you order the same breakfast, say, every morning, Every morning it's just a little bit randomly different. different. <laughs> yeah. I think they do that to stamp their own little mark on the dish each no, day. I just think it's because they're all different. stoned. <laughs> <laughs> Honestly, the service in hotels, you'd think they've got a marijuana plantation out the back. <laughs> you ask for a G&T and, you know, sometimes they'll even forget the gin. <laughs> and they go down and bring it. I mean, they're just how adorable. Wonderful. What? Yeah. People don't know how likeable Indians are, yeah. you know. It's really overcrowded. But nobody's aggressive. Even if there's millions of people on the street, nobody's jostling no, you. No. Everyone just does this slightly stoned dance. <laughs> <laughs> and it all seems to be chaos, but it's not, we discovered. Mm. Yeah, organised chaos. It's organised chaos, chaos. Really. and it really is. After about two and a half hours of gentle cooking, the vindaloo is ready. Peter, that looks amazing. Right, Look after that. a time of wonder, it's ready. Madam? Fantastic, thank you. Do I need to have some water standing by? <laughs> <laughs> mm. oh, wow. oh, that's just beautiful. <laughs> and those layers of flavour just kind of come through in yeah. waves. Mm. And it's not too hot at all. And it's dark and sexy. Oh, it's yum. Later, find out what a fish molly is when Julie makes one for me. Yeah, good golly, beautiful. Miss Molly, it's <laughs> looking good. But next, I travel to meet Brett McGregor, the deputy school principal who became this country's first MasterChef winner. And then, of course, I only go one or two bits of pork because I'm not greedy. <laughs> I'm heading out west to meet the winner of New Zealand's very first MasterChef. I'm here to meet the author of this book, A Taste of Home, by Brett McGregor. He lives up one of the steepest driveways in the world. 
Brett's cooking inspiration was first his parents and then the cooking bible. I think growing up, the Edmunds cookbook, for me, number one, it's where I learned all my basics. And in fact, the Taste of Home is kind of an ode to that in a lot of respects because there's a how-to section in the back that kind of tells people, uh, all up and coming cooks, or even if you're an old hand, some little tips and tricks mm. that I think um, can make life a little easier. Brett's rise to cooking glory was nowhere as steep as his driveway. He travelled overseas for 10 years after leaving school, became a teacher and eventually deputy principal of a Christchurch school. Then a chance moment led to him becoming the first Kiwi to win MasterChef. Funnily enough, I was on the beach in Kaikoura. I had a batch in Kaikoura at the time and I just walked in off the beach sunburnt and I flicked on the television and Julie Goodwin was winning Australian MasterChef and I casually turned to Tracy and said, you know what, I reckon I could do that. She said, well, we'll go on then and I did. And awesome, so glad that I actually got up off the couch and gave it a go. Now Brett is going to make something from his book, Taste of Home, double cooked sticky pork belly. You want to kind of marinate the pork for 30 minutes up to two hours. You can do it overnight if you want. So I've got one cup of pineapple juice a couple of tablespoons of sherry from Nana's cupboard, <laughs> three tablespoons of brown sugar, and four tablespoons of light salt-reduced soy sauce. So you just want to combine that until your sugar is dissolved. Now all I need to do is dice my pork. And so I always use a finger as a measurer, so it's all going to come out about the same size. Okay. A rough dice, it doesn't have to be perfect. Straight into the marinade. Just want to make sure that it's all nicely covered in the marinade. Cover it, put it in the refrigerator. 30 minutes or above is, is fine, but I've got to admit, I'm a little bit ahead of the game here. I've, <laughs> I've had one simmering for a little while, so if you look here... Oh, that smells amazing. Pork's perfect. All I've had to do there is to yeah. add in a star anise, uh, sesame oil and half a cup of water. I brought it to a boil and I've just let it simmer. If you pick up a piece of pork and I go like, that, like that, OK, it's really, really soft. Perfect. So now all I want to do is make sure that I keep all of the nice liquid and the liquid that you keep actually becomes a really delicious caramel. I'm going to bring it up to a boil again right. and then I'll let it simmer away really nicely. And I suspect I'm on the slaw. <sighs> yes, you are. <laughs> Excellent. I'm going to go a red apple and a green apple, mm -hmm. a little bit of red cabbage, a little bit of green cabbage, a little bit of fresh parsley and I will just dry toast some pistachios because that's a little bit of crunch on nice. the top. Nice. Okay, I'm going to okay. be really careful with this and really look out for my fingers. In fact, do you want to show me first? I think I will. Yeah, that's a good idea. OK, so if, if anyone's got one of these at home, the main thing is please keep your palms away and your fingers away because it is super sharp. sharp. I've got my julienne fine slice, like a matchstick, and a little bit of pressure. And then what? That wasn't a finger, was it? No finger. <laughs> but look, could you imagine how much time that actually saved? How much of this do we need? <laughs> We're going to need that one, that one, that one. No, just two apples, a red and a, a, red and a green. This is a disaster. Come on, here, I'll have a go, eh? She chickened out. OK, so... Perfect. Perfect apple, and I like the red and the green. It just goes with the salad. A little bit of lemon. Lemon lifts everything. Yeah, right. Okay, OK, so apples in. We'll put the cabbages in. And while you're doing that, I might make a dressing. I'm echoing what's in the salad in the dressing. Just a couple of tablespoons of apple juice. But to cut through that, you need some apple cider vinegar, a little bit of honey, a little bit of oil to bring everything together, just a couple of tablespoons, veggie oil, and then, of course, to make it a delicious mayonnaise for a slaw... Some mayonnaise. You need to have some mayonnaise. Yeah. There's some great products out there, so just couple, use those. A couple of tablespoons? We'll go maybe three of those. And how's our sticky sauce going on over there? Oh, look, it's... You can see in there now, it's just kind of uh, reducing really nicely, actually. And if you look in there, look... It's all coming together. To That's looking pretty good, isn't it? That's looking really good, actually. Like a good mayo? I think the little trick when you're making this uh, coleslaw is you need to make sure that it's about an hour before you want to serve it to anybody. Right. Because you want everything to kind of come together. Okay. Okay, so we'll just have a little... Do you want to have a little try of that? Yeah, go on. Thanks. See if we've got the right kind of balance. Ooh. Is that good or bad? No, it's good. There's a tartness to the vinegar, but yep. then it kind of smooths out. Yeah, that's what I'm yeah, kind of hoping. Good. Okay. So, because the vinegar that you get, because this is also going to be quite, um, obviously, it's caramelised. So, yeah. you really need something that's going to cut yeah. through that. Well, that's good, and it's not too thick either. So, you can mix that through, and while you're doing that, I'll slice some parsley to also go in. And I think it also needs half a red onion to go in there as well. And then we'll just make sure it's all nicely separated. OK, so the pork is um, beginning to really uh, cool down, enough for us to handle. A little bit of corn flour. Straight into there, without um, any of the liquid. Give it a good shake. 
Just make sure it's got a nice coating. OK, look at that caramel now. You can see it's starting to thicken up. It'll thicken up more on cooling as well. But you know when they say it should coat the back of a spoon, you can Look see that. that. That looks great. Would you like me to chop some nuts, Brett? Yeah, yeah, go for gold. Give us a nice crunch on the top of the coleslaw. Rightio, so as I said, I've just dusted the pork and the corn flour. That's now ready for the second cooking, which is the deep fryer. OK. OK. It's already at 180, nicely preheated. So all I'm going to do now is just throw this in. Close the lid so you've got no spitting. And now you've just got to wait. I think we should just put a really nice cabbage leaf in there like so, and then we'll put the pork in on top of there. Pork is done perfectly. Oh, that looks amazing. Oh, you can hear that crispy, crunchy. Make sure everything's nicely coated, and then we'll just top that up so it looks like a healthy serving. For two. Now it's for two. <laughs> See, I can imagine sitting outside in summer and having this as a shared plate on your table and just all grabbing. That is exactly how, how, it's meant to how be. and that's exactly how we do it. Even the coleslaw looks good. So I think just to put a bit more on the top. Look. Look at that. Voila. It's time to eat. It's time to eat, <laughs> for sure. You know, it's been an absolute pleasure to have you over. Thank you. But, but even better to actually cook a meal for you. I see that you did it slightly different to me. Right. So I would always go a little bit of the slaw at the bottom. You set me up for failure I on that. I think I might have a little yeah. bit. And then, of course, I only go one or two bits of pork, so I'm not greedy. <laughs> <laughs> but that's it, you know, and, and I think outside with a cold beer, yeah. summer, this is beautiful. And it can be done on the barbecue really easily. Yeah, nice. So, Cheers. Bon or something. Bon appetit. I love that. It's so good it should be bad. Mm. Mm. It's fresh. Absolutely. But simple. The best recipes are the most simplest, and this one, with the limited amount of ingredients it has, I think is a winner. It will be a taste in my home, Brett McGregor. Oh, good. Thanks for having me today. Oh, it's been an absolute <laughs> pleasure. Thanks oh. for having me. <laughs> After the break, Julie and Peter are back in the kitchen cooking and sharing experiences of India. They would say, we're not opening the bottle, we're Muslims. I know. But you can <laughs> we would say, we're Christians, we'll open it. <laughs> <laughs> we're back at Cook the Books, where Julie Leclerc and Peter Mathias are reminiscing about taking home economics at school. I was just in ecstasy because it got me out of maths. And I, you, you started very little, and I can remember making a cake and it was all gloopy and wet. You put it in this hot thing called an oven and this incredibly magical thing happens when you open the door, the gloopy stuff's turned into something else. There's a cake <laughs> And in you can there. eat it. It's like magic. magic. It is like magic. Cooking yeah. is magic. It is. That's the magic we have in our lives that's free and cheap True. and we can access it whenever we mm -hmm. want. Julie's going to perform some magic with a dish from southern India called fish molly. And we get seeing it on menus, fish molly, right. and we keep thinking, didn't we, Peter? Who's this molly person? Who's molly? Who's molly? <laughs> molly does a wonderful fish dish. <laughs> she sure does. Actually relates to Malay, because the Malaysian traders brought it. It's really on trend in New Zealand, but it's what they've been doing hundreds of years in India. Similarly to Peter's dish, we're going to fry some spices. I've got um, green cardamom, um, and there's actually black cardamom as well. Right. Black cardamom's quite smoky and different. It smells like fire. It does, doesn't it? Yeah. And it's used more with meat dishes, right. whereas the green cardamom is a bit lighter and fresher. Yeah, nice. So it's great with fish, fish. and vegetable dishes. I'm just going to just lightly, lightly crush these, just to get those fragrances and tastes coming out. And then some, a few cloves. I quite like to pick them out towards the end because I hate it when you get a mouthful of yeah, clove clothes, or yeah. something like that. Sure. Lovely um, cinnamon stick. So we just need to get those sizzling, sure. sizzling. And I've brought along my lovely little yeah, Indian um, so spice authentic. box. Love it. So I'm going to pop a little bit of white pepper. Mm -hmm. White pepper's great for this sort of dish because it doesn't discolour it. And what's the inspiration behind this dish, Julie? Uh, well, after we sort of travelled around with Peter's tours, we went down to Kerala, and it, it's quite different. The food's quite different. It's a bit more tropical. So really, um, this is, was my favourite dish from Kerala. Kerala's got all these fabulous waterways, 
And people live their lives on either side of the canal, don't they, Julie? And so you see people climbing up coconut trees, getting coconuts, offering them to you as you sail by. And oh, it's very charming. Yeah, it How is fantastic. very charming. And there's great fish shops all along the waterfront. And you go and choose your own fish, and then you take it to this shack, and they cook it for you. They were fast. We so went funny. there every day. They were wildly entertaining. And it's, it's very hard. In fact, I don't think they can get alcohol at all in Cochin now. It was hard to get a drink and so we would sneak it in and put it in cups out the back <laughs> and they would say we're not opening the bottle we're muslims and but you can we open say it. we're christians we'll open it <laughs> <laughs> so i'm going to add these green chilies in mm -hmm. just because i'm not so good with heat and perhaps you're not either <laughs> i'm going to take maybe. the um seeds out and a really easy way to do that is just to rub a... Oh, you um, and your teaspoon oh, tricks. Oh, your teaspoon tricks. Feeling Another ginger. Teaspoon trick. and, exactly. Um, just rub the teaspoon along like that, and we can throw those in. Yeah. And so well, that's kind of the basic sauce. OK, right. And then all we do now is add coconut cream. Yum. Of course, in India, you would have this pretty fresh. fresh. Yes. Scraped the coconut, squeezed it absolutely. through. Yeah, absolutely. And, we uh, saw that happening. Yum. I've got a couple of things, but we can put them in now. So. <laughs> Turmeric. Well, for some colour. Yeah, and that is quite, it is quite a yellowy coloured dish. And a touch of vinegar. So this is white vinegar this time, of course, because we have a white dish. dish. And the other wonderful thing are curry leaves. I love oh, curry leaves. Do you love them? I, I don't know. Oh. I don't know if I do it. They smell oh, kind of like curry. Oh, they're, they're heavenly. Just give it a scrunch. Oh, and yeah, then, and then feel it. You yeah. really get the smell. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So throw all of those all in of those there. Yeah, I need wise. to just bring it up sure. to a simmer. So you really need a fish that's going to hold together. Yes. So like a kingfish is really good. Harpook is great as well. And this is a, one I hadn't seen before, and it's called pore, right. P-O-R-A-E. Yes. And it's a beautiful fish. It holds together really, really well. <laughs> so I'm going to hide these under here, and I'll get you to just put the sauce Make over the top so that, yeah, they're cool. So, you know, then it cooks evenly. So this is a really easy dish to put so, together. Yeah. And Unlike mine, which took half a day. <laughs> <laughs> You're still reeling from it. Looks beautiful. We'll give it five minutes yes. for the fish to cook through, and then we'll have a taste. Great. OK, so that's been bubbling away, simmering away, for, what, five or six minutes or yeah, so? it's looking great. How do we know? Because we can't see the fish, right? A really great way to test is just to get a little piece out and just see if it flakes, flakes. easily. Right, cooked. It's done. So we just um, put these around the outside, oh, really, I see. Look at and they just warm through, so they don't have to be really hot either. But it, it actually makes it pop. It looks great, doesn't Absolutely. it? Absolutely. Yeah, good golly, Miss Molly, it's looking good. <laughs> I love that colour. The colour. Stunning, yeah. isn't it? <laughs> OK, I've got some rice that I've quickly prepared in the microwave for us. Fantastic. Oh, Jasmine rice. Oh, this is a good right. thing. Isn't it? Hmm. Quick and easy. So you cook that in the microwave in that? Yes, I think yes. 12 minutes. The rice and the water in that, put it in the microwave, go away, have a glass of sherry, come back. Ta-da! <laughs> All right, ladies, bon appetit. Bon appetit. Let's try Molly's fish. <laughs> Whoever she was. Ooh, ooh. Mm. It's delicate, but mm. there's a lot happening there. Creamy. Mm. Oh, that's divine. Excellent. And did you try curry leaf? Yeah, I'm just putting yeah. it on. OK, good. <laughs> Julie, that is divine. Oh, mm, so glad. That's a real yeah. stunning dish. You can see why we fell in love with it. Yeah, absolutely, and wanted yeah. to eat it every day. <laughs> we did. We, we did. Every day. We had Molly every day. We went out to her town and said, Where's Molly? <laughs> Thank you, Molly. This is the last episode in this series of Cook the Books, and we thought Peter could have the last word. And I always loved cooking because it made me feel good and it made people like me. It made my brothers and sisters not look on me so harshly. And then as I grew older, it was the same thing. People like you if you can cook. It's a shortcut to love. Books from the series are available in-store and online at cookthebooks.tv.